Welcome to Late Night with Larry. We're here doing it once again. I'm here with my co-host Vince. Vince, give me a shout out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Larry D Studios. Glad to be here. Yeah, we sure are. We're glad to be back doing it again for you all out there. So before we get started, we want you to hit that subscribe button and follow us. And if you got an encounter, a story, a haunting, or something you'd like to share with us, here's how you get in touch with us. Email us at late night with larry 55 at gmail.com and we'll respond to your email and we now have the capability to bring you on live yep so, all you, we're just a phone call away now that's right a phone call away and we can hear your story straight right. from you now before we get started oh our traditional thing now that i'm on the road to recovery that's right so here we go this is to the road to recovery. This is uh, the second part of the vaccine. Either the road to recovery or the road to ruin. You choose. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Ah, that is so good. That's almost too easy. I know. So what we want to talk about tonight is on our last podcast, we had mentioned, you know, we're talking about skinwalkers and tonight... We want to talk about dogmen because we touched on is there a difference between a skinwalker or a dogman? And, you know, I went back and did my research and I believe there clearly is a difference between the two. Right. I believe so, too. And uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the dogman and some of the things people have seen, heard, and uh, maybe a little bit of the mythology behind it. Um, so... We're going to kick it off. Uh, I was watching uh, the Beast of Bray Road documentary again. And uh, there were a couple of things I caught this time around. And like me, I don't take notes. But one of the things that stood out was, uh, and my brother, we were talking about it, the, the mythology behind it. So uh, supposedly dogmen uh stemmed from greek mythology that zeus went to a dinner party he was invited to and to make a long story short he was fed his son the the king's son the, the king that invited him yeah the, he had butchered zeus's son chopped him into pieces and he was going to feed him his son but zeus being all omni omnipotent is what they said and all knowing all seeing he revived his son before he went to dinner. So when he went to the dinner, he cursed this king and cursed him to walk the earth as a wild beast, which is where the lichen or the werewolf came from. Right. And uh, I thought that was interesting. The first time I watched it, I really didn't catch it, but I caught it this time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, I thought that was very interesting. Uh, and also another story I heard on a, I, I watched another documentary about the same thing, the, what it was about is the Beast of Bray Road, because some think it's a werewolf. Um, and this was about a werewolf in the United Kingdom, I believe it was back in the 1700s, 1800s. Right. Now, this guy, he, he they said he had pointed teeth like a canine. And he would brag that he killed, I think, 17 people. And he said he had an appetite for human flesh. Well, they back in the day, you know, they took that seriously. If somebody was... Uh, was accused of being a witch or, or sorcerer, any kind of black magic or just anything that they really didn't understand. And uh, they would hang him. Yeah, it was a death sentence. And, and you know, that, that stemmed from, of course, the expansion of the church. Right. Uh, they, they, they were really superstitious. And uh, if you weren't a believing Christian, you were, uh, you know, a pagan or, and it was mostly Catholicism that was that movement. Yes. But they would put you to death for any little thing. Uh, and not to get off subject, but that's why uh, Isaac Newton never really told people about, you know, his uh, telescope and what his theory that the, the planets revolved around the sun, which he was right. Because at that time, no, everything, the earth was the same. <coughs> Everything revolved around the earth because we were the center. And uh, we know that's not true today, but... That was back in the flat earth theory. R right. And he, he wouldn't divulge that because he knew that they'd triumph for witchcraft or, you know... Sorcery. Hip hypocrisy. And, yeah. and uh, he was smart not to. But anyway, back to the dogman. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> anyway, in this case in the UK, this uh, this man, 
he claimed to have a, a an appetite for human flesh. He claimed to have killed people. Now they took him to court. They tried him. They found him guilty. Now I, I didn't really say what kind of evidence they had against him, other than his word and his teeth. But uh, they sentenced him to death and they hung him. I mean, but he he openly admitted that, that this was what he was doing, and so he kind of gave himself a death sentence. Right, and 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 that was back in the day. Now <clears throat> you could uh you could walk into police station and say I killed a hundred people, but without any bodies or any proof, they can't hold you. And, That's right, and and I mean today's different. Today they probably take them for a psyche eval and and you know say well where's the bodies and if you can produce anything then right they're just going to label you as a crazy nut and take you to a homeless shelter <laughs> i'm just kidding but anyway one another thing i was uh noticing that on this uh, documentary the, the eyewitnesses their stories uh they coincide with they were talking to a reporter and one of the girls contacted her and said that, you know, I was driving down the road. She felt like she ran over something. It was a bump. And when she, the reporter looked at her car, she said it coincided with her story that she saw scratch marks down, you know, down the center of the car, like something had been clawing it. Right. Now, I mean, someone could put those scratch marks or whatnot, but in situations like this one, you know, first of all, people are afraid to talk about things like this because they're going to get labeled as crazy. Right. But I, I do believe some people genuinely have these experiences. And it's kind of like we talk about the Sasquatch. Too many people see this for it to be a fairy tale. Right. Yeah. Now, not to get off subject, but uh, it was right after I got out of high school. I had already left our hometown, but one of my best friends was still there. And when I came came back, he told me a story. He was dating this girl. She lived kind of on the outskirts of town. Right. And she called him one night, and she was freaking out. She said, there's something out here. So he went to stay with her and her little sister, and they lived in a, a single-wide mobile home. But he said they could hear he could hear something outside, and it was walking the length of the, the mobile home. And it, it, he said it sounded like claws just scratching against the wall. Wow. That's and um, there, there's there's also been some uh, I want to say a state <clears throat> police account around the Gallup area where something he described it like a werewolf, but he had the the scratches on his police unit. Right, and you know I I did hear a similar story, and it was from a police officer. And are are you talking about uh, down on the Zuni Highway? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, because the story I was told was that this this officer was driving uh, and if you ever have driven this highway and for those of you that haven't let me just tell you that once you leave the little village of zuni it's dark there there's from from that little village all the way almost until you get into gallup there's no lights so that road is dark there, there's not a single street light no it's a two-lane highway it's a dangerous road right so he was patrolling as normal and he noticed he was doing about 55 just cruising along and he noticed something out of his peripheral vision and he looked over and he noticed that this like a dog man a werewolf just running along beside his car now he sped up and as he sped up so did the creature and you know it, it did like get close to his car and bump it and then it went off in its direction and he went off but he didn't stop until he got to lights because he was a little shook up but here's my thing was that a skinwalker or was that a dog man uh in our area that story that may have been a skinwalker right. uh the dogmen are predominantly like on the East Coast. You know, we don't have too many sightings of dogmen here. And I don't know why. Uh, well, maybe they sectioned up the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's back up to okay. uh, uh, my friend from work who, okay. by the way, agreed to come on. Uh, he, he said he'll come in or he'll do it on the phone. We just got to uh, figure out the timing. Coordinate. But he's the one who told me when he was in high school, they ran into a werewolf okay. uh, in one of the Pueblos between Gallup and Albuquerque. Oh, yeah, you and, did say that story. And uh, in another Pueblo where his father-in-law is, 
his father-in-law, he told the father-in-law the story and his father-in-law said, I thought we killed them all. So maybe they were here and they were hunted. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. I, I mean, that that's possible. Um, like I, I, I hear a lot of details and a lot of stories about people seeing Sasquatch Bigfoot in our area, but I, I haven't really heard many stories about dogmen. I mean, the one my brother told me, I'm like, yeah, that is possible. But like he said, supposedly that little tribe hunted them and they were, and they killed them. Now on this documentary, they also did say these creatures can be killed. Of course, like anything, uh, and that's where they talked about the theory of the silver bullet, you know, and how it was blessed by a, in the 1700s when uh, the werewolf was running wild and a priest blessed a chalice. They mounted it down and made bullets, and it was a silver bullet that killed him. But according to my brother's story, it doesn't take a silver bullet. <laughs> right. Now, the silver bullet's a lot of folklore there. Right. But this could be folklore, too. Now, I, they didn't mention anything about using silver bullets. Uh, I know now they still have armed guards with traditional weapons, so, right? Or you know, up-to-date weapons, anyway. Well, I would think if you if you're uh, patrolling and you have a fifty caliber, I don't care what it is, it's going to cut it up. Yeah, it's going to it's it, going it, to cut it in pieces. It's going to turn it to hamburger meat. Yeah. But anyway, you know, uh, the dog man. Here's the other thing. <coughs> now, this documentary, uh, Beast of Bray Road took place in, uh, I do believe, Wisconsin. Alcorn, yeah, Wisconsin. Al Alcorn, Wisconsin. Now, they also talked about, this is, the, they played this into it too, which is another theory. Around Alcorn and some of the surrounding areas, they were talking about there's a lot of uh, devil worship. Right. And uh, they were talking about maybe some of these uh people that were out there doing their uh devil worshiping i don't know what to call it black mass or whatnot uh they were maybe that they were out there conjuring up these spirits because the way they made it sound is that this could have been a spirit conjured up and the reason i say it is the one of the the farmer a matter was it the farmer someone that witnessed no no I, let me take that back. It was around an orphanage that this man was a security guard and his job, it was the early 1900s. He said his father's job was to walk around the orphanage and walk the grounds at night. Well, one night he saw this dog man digging up whatever it was looking for. And as he approached it and shined the light, it took off. Well, he was curious, so this, he went back the second night as he was patrolling the ground. Same time, about one in the morning, I, I believe they said, there it was again. And he said he saw it again. This time it stood up and it kind of confronted him, walked toward him. It didn't attack him or say anything, but it mumbled some words. And this reporter was saying the words that it said... Uh, she looked it up, and biblically it meant it was kind of like uh, a legion of demons. And she said it's in the Bible, and right. and and it means you know it, it referenced in the days of Jesus that this was a legion of demons. And she said the word, and I I wanted to go look it up, but you know I get busy with my day and whatnot, and I wanted to, I wanted to fact check her, which I still will. But if if you have access to this documentary fact check it yourself but anyway they took it back to that saying you know these these cults out there doing their demonic worship they could have conjured it and that's why when it saw that man it said those words because it could be demonic right and uh i thought well that's another interesting <laughs> theory. right now now to get back to that story i i heard it also on one of the other documentaries but they said he was a security guard at a hospital for special needs children. And he, now in Wisconsin, right. they have a, 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 a history with, uh, it, was, it was Native American land. Right. And where that beast was actually digging was, I don't know if you're <clears throat> familiar with them, but they have these burial mounds where they would bury their dead and their, their mounds. But the werewolf or the beast 
was on top of the mound digging. Right. And and you're right. It may have been that. I may be mistaken. You may be right on that. It may have been a hospital. But here's another thing. They talked about the native the natives that used which is Bry Road now, which was a trail that the natives used for trading and that's what has become Briar Road. And uh I you know, you, you, you can't help but wondering, you know, this this uh I don't even want to say it's folklore because too many people have seen it and they've reported it and right. and it's been in the paper since the early 1900s and uh so this creature that's out there roaming that land uh you know does it have to do with something uh, maybe of course with the witchcraft but they I like how they threw the this road that it's on is native american right uh, it was a trail used for trading, and like you just pointed out, where it was digging was a burial mound. Right. And uh, now people have seen this creature uh, on the side of the road eating roadkill. Right. <clears throat> now, one of the questions that was posed was, since there was a lot of Native Americans there, could it be a skinwalker? But the one thing that people have never seen is it changing from skinwalker back to normal. It's it's always in its werewolf state. It eats in its werewolf state, uh, right. so I, I don't think it's a skinwalker. No, and as to where skinwalker, and they did even talk about skinwalkers on this end, where skinwalker is a, a Navajo priest, as we talked about, a medicine man of the highest level who chooses to use his power for good or evil, and they choose evil. So you're going to have that, uh, I guess, witch doctor, this He's going to go from human to half beast and, and then back right. as to where this creature is just a creature. Right. And and we mentioned that before, a, a skinwalker don't fully convert. No. But this this is, a, they said it looks like a, a dire wolf. It's big, but it's on two, on two legs. And that's another thing they said. When this creature was spotted on all fours, they said it was like three times the size of a regular wolf. Now, if you ever seen a wolf in the wild, they're not small. They're big. You know, a, a lot of people, uh, they they tend to mistake a coyote with a wolf. But if you've seen a wolf, there's no mistaking. No, a, a wolf's like twice the size. Or of, more. Or, or, or I'd say better. I'd say three times the size of a coyote. Right. And a wolf will, will swallow a coyote. A wolf will. They'll, they'll eat coyotes like they're, they're pups. Yeah. But... And, you know, uh, and here's the other thing that I thought about when they started putting this uh, creature into maybe it was conjured as a demon. There was a farmer that owned a piece of land up in Wisconsin. He's a retired teacher. And he set trail cams out. Well, you know, he he talked about one harvest. He was he, he was growing alfalfa hay. And he went to some of the neighboring farmers and told them, you know, hey, come on and uh, give me a hand because I, I got to harvest this hay. And, you know, I got to basically put it up in his barn for storage. And if anyone's seen a bale of hay, uh, you, you either got to be really strong or it takes two guys to start stacking that. Yeah. And uh, they said, sure, we'll help them. And one of the farmers said, hey, you know, uh, the piece of land you bought and where you live, he said, the the beast Briar Road lives on your property. My wife's seen it. And he started thinking, what? This can't be right. So they showed him and told him where it was. So out of curiosity, you know, he said, the one of the farmers said, my wife saw it eating a raccoon. So out of curiosity, he was coming home there was a dead raccoon roadkill. He took that raccoon, placed it where they said the beast lives. Sure enough, he, he came back and the, bee, the the raccoon was split open from the throat on down with the entrails pulled out. And uh, it was moved even from where he put it. And then he thought, oh, okay, well. So then he did it again and he used a badger, which is a little bigger, about 20 pounds. And he said the badger, where he put it, had been moved about 20 feet away from where it was. So then thinking, okay, you know, this is something. He found a, a little, I don't know if it was a fawn, but it was a deer, about 60, 70 pounds, that was roadkill, and he placed it there. But this time, he says on his cameras, what he caught was a mist 
wherever he, where, when he put that deer down there, he said, oh, I got to look at my cameras. When he looked at his cameras where the deer was, there was a mist. When he went out there to see if the deer was still there, it was gone. So all he caught was a mist. So I'm thinking, wow, if it didn't transform into a full-fledged shape, uh, flesh and blood, was it, like some people say, a ghost or a demon? You know, I, so many things went through my mind. And if you've watched this documentary, you're gonna, you're gonna, maybe have crazy thoughts like me too. <laughs> right now, there's a lot of documentaries about the the Beast of Bray Road. Uh, you could find them on YouTube. The one he's talking about is on Prime, right. and I've seen that on TV. Now, a lot of the ones that I saw, they're good. You know, they do a lot of uh, <clears throat> the history, the folklore. But the the documentary he's talking about, this person who bought the, the land, he actually went and did field research. And, and that's the part I like because right. he was showing uh, actual evidence. Right. And that's, and that's what we're all about. You know, they say the proof's in the pudding. It and, is. And that's why we go out to the mountains to research and try to find our own evidence. That's right. I mean, because the only person that's going to convince you that it's real is you. Right. Uh, you could hear stories. I mean, you could be hearing our podcast and, and say, these guys are full of shit. But until you go out there and experience something for yourself, that's all it's going to be is folklore to you. Right. And and a lot of people who uh, discount all the evidence or say, no, nah, this is another wacko. They're usually people who don't step foot in the forest. You know, they're, uh, they sit behind their computer. <laughs> or Yeah, they... They, they they do their research on the computer rather than going out and saying, is this for real? So let me go out there. And, you know, that's what we do. We go out there and we do it. Now, have we seen a dog, man? No, I haven't. But, you know, this subject intrigued me and I, I dig into it. And most, like, uh, most of the sightings, like I said, I see or hear about, they're up in the, the upper northeast and... They're scattered around, but like my brother was saying, maybe at one time we had them here, but, you know, these, the tribes will hunt them down and kill them. Right. Now, um, th this did intrigue me, you know, because there's always been the debate. Is it uh, related to the Sasquatch or <coughs> because they're both uh, big, muscular creatures. Right. But I, d I don't think so because one of the reasons is some of the evidence this guy found on his property and one the paw prints right and no no uh some of the paw prints they said like i i seen a picture uh, and this wasn't on the documentary but as i was looking supposedly one of the paw prints from the dogman uh the guy put his hand down or maybe this was he put his hand down and he has a pretty big hand and that paw print was way bigger than his hand so oh it was and so they made a cast of the paw print and they sent it to universities and whatnot. And a lot of people didn't want to look at it. They didn't want to deal with it. One university flat out looked at it and said, this is, this is a, a, a deformed wolf or something they called it. Right. Now, now one of the things that they did say was uh, they never seen a canine print like that because it had more pads than any canine known to man. Right. But he showed the picture of his hand next to the paw print, and it was it was big. And he said, if you if you know there's something with the paw this big running out in that forest, why would you want to go out there? Right. Exactly. And that made sense to me. If I saw that paw print, I I would never step foot into the forest without being armed with something that I think would take it down. Right, but w we've talked about this before. Uh, I think even if you're armed, uh, these creatures, uh, Bigfoot, Dogman, whatever, if they want you, they're going to get you because I believe they could sneak up on you without well, you knowing it. They're so stealthy. And that's another thing that was in this documentary. They talked about uh, people that were going out to hunt them in the early days with the lantern and these creatures were so stealthy they're looking out in the woods with these little lanterns and it's right behind them and it attack them and kill them and devour them i mean I, I think that's true today because we go out into the forest and and when it's dark if if you don't have at least a 20 foot parameter lit up all the way around you you are at the mercy of these of any creature out there right you're uh, when you're out there in the in the forest in the middle of the night 
you realize how small and insignificant, and insignificant you really are. Yeah, we, we've, we've noticed that many times. Because yeah. <laughs> it, it is. Once that sun goes down, and, and especially if you're in semi, I'm not talking thick forest like the rainforest, just, just like our regular forest terrain out here, which is, you know, you get it, some's thin, some's thick. But where we go, there's plenty of trees. Once that sun goes down, it's darkness. Yeah. There's no lights, no no city anywhere no. close, uh, no one to call. So, that, you know, we, we know that uh, at any time there could be creatures around us. And that's why we're getting big on the infrared, the, the night vision. I, I want to know what's out there around us. <laughs> Right, and not only that, if there is something we want to, we want proof. We want to, we want some evidence. Right, because if not, it's just another story. Now, I know we've given you our spill and our theories and what we've heard about the dog man, but you know, any of you out there listening, what are your thoughts? What have you, what do you know about it? Uh, do you do your research? Right. Do you have a story to tell us? You now, know? now we've had some hits from. Uh, People in other countries listening to the podcast. Right. Now, we know that a lot of other countries have their version of Sasquatch. They do. Do you guys have a, your version of the Dogman also? That's right. Um, if you're in another country listening, especially you guys in Australia, you talk about the, your Yowie. Yowie or, or werewolves are yeah. in, the, in, the, in Europe. There's always been werewolf stories. That's right. So if you have something like the Dogman, which you consider the werewolf, Share it with us. Let us know. Because we know Sasquatch has been seen all over the world, from the Himalayas, the Yeti, all the way down here to New Mexico. Yep, all the way to our family reunion. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, we'd like to hear your thoughts. Um, Anyway, that's what we wanted to talk about tonight. We hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, give us a shout out, man. We're, We're ready to take phone calls. If you got a story, let's hear it. Yeah, we're, let, we're ready for it. Let us know if we make you think or if we put you to sleep, whatever. That's right. We want to hear your feedback. And, and you know and you know we're on YouTube, so you can find us on YouTube. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Peace out. Peace. <laughs>